Lake City, another stronghold of the vivacious little bird. And yet, they're illegal immigrants here, not native to North America. Today, they may be real New Yorkers, but sparrow tweeting on Wall Street is a recent phenomenon. When Europeans first arrived in North America, they missed the birds they were familiar with. To ease their homesickness, a handful of sparrows were brought over and released in this New York cemetery in 1855. The sparrows soon established themselves among the native birds and spread across the entire continent. Other European species were to follow. The plan was to introduce all Shakespeare's birds to the New World. Modern city life can be deadly for birds. A sheer glass wall looks just like the sky. But how sparrows have learned to adapt to our concrete jungles. They're as at home here as their human neighbors. The smooth fronts of our modern buildings provide little in the way of nesting cavities, but the adaptable birds have found an alternative solution. sized pipes supporting the traffic lights at every street corner. It's a home with a view, well out of reach of predators and the busy traffic below. The nearby fountain is an added bonus. City life can be hot and dusty and a cooling shower is part of the daily ritual. And sometimes it's followed by a good roll around in the sand. bathing paradoxically serves to clean the feathers and helps rid them of parasites such as ticks and mites. Trouble in a beer garden near the Flatiron building. It has a popular sparrow beach, but not everyone is happy to share. Space on the sandy gravel is hotly contested. Every beach also has its litter bugs, and the sparrow's human neighbors are the worst offenders. sudden change in the weather, and it's time to abandon the beach. Both man and bird seek shelter from the downpour. Those that aren't breeding can afford to wait and sit out the storm. Few birds will fly in conditions like this. But at the traffic lights, it's business as usual. This pair already has young, and there's no time to waste. The hungry chicks need constant feeding. They'll need to leave the nest just two weeks after hatching.
The morning rush hour is an opportune time for easy pickings. An abandoned breakfast will provide valuable protein for the chicks. It's a noisy place for a sparrow nursery, but they seem unperturbed. After all, these are birds from the hood. During the first few days, the chicks are mainly fed on insects. But as they grow older, they'll switch to a more vegetarian diet. Sparrows are sociable birds and like to nest close to each other. This traffic light has space for two families. But the female at the other end is on her own. In fact, she's the male's second mate. It's not an unheard of arrangement in house sparrows, but then again, relationships in New York generally seem to be more flexible. Defending two females against rivals may be easier when nest sites are close together. Females aren't always faithful, and the male knows he has to guard them closely to avoid being cuckolded. A quarter of all chicks are in fact not fathered by the attending male. The chicks in one nest are still very young and vulnerable. At the other end, the youngsters are already close to fledging. The female brings them food nearly 200 times a day. The younger chicks next door have fallen quiet. They've been waiting for their mother for some time now. From his lookout post, the male keeps an eye out. He's noticed the female's gone missing. At this age, the chicks need constant feeding, or they'll quickly lose strength. He becomes agitated and starts to call. If the mother doesn't return soon, the chicks will be in trouble. The older chicks have no such worries. Their delivery is on time. But the youngsters in the neighboring nest are getting weaker. The male reacts instinctively to their distress. But his attempts to call their mother go unheard. Studies comparing country and city sparrows have shown that the city dwellers are more adaptable when faced with problems. He sees his chicks are hungry, and he heads off to find food. A few minutes later, and he's back. Sparrow chicks rarely die of starvation. Even unrelated neighbors will often care for chicks in distress. In the adjoining camp, their half-siblings are getting ready to leave the nest. But it's a long jump to freedom, or death. House sparrows are more commonly killed by cars than any other bird. There's nothing his mother can do to help now. A last minute leap to safety. This is the most dangerous time for a young sparrow. Only one in four will make it to their first birthday. Unfamiliar noise and bustle frighten the young bird. He seeks shelter under a bush. But his mother hasn't abandoned him yet. She'll continue to feed him for another week or so 
until he can fend for himself.